Hi there farmers. The diseases we have are uh, two types. We have uh, soil born and we have leaf diseases. The soil born diseases are dumping off. It affects the seedlings mostly. It makes them to, to rot and die. And if you approach the plant, you're going to find a whitey cottony uh, growth. For the nematodes, they are small worms that feed on the plant roots, limiting them from growing effectively. The cause of the plant, they cause the plant to wither and eventually die even when you are watering. It can be caused by uh, soil, so they can be soil born and they can be caused by fresh water. So doing a soil test, water test, it is good to help uh, in the control of these diseases. So there are also the leaf uh, diseases which are the most challenging and they are caused by fungal infections which you can spray fungicides like regain regularly uh, or on a strict program so let's say you have started uh, using the regain uh, product today the, on the 3rd of july and you want to be spraying every week make sure that you stick around to that program when spraying remember to spray at the top and at the bottom of the leaves and at the vines Blight affects the leaves and causes the plants to die. There is also woodiness which distorts the uh, leaves growth and woodens the fruits. So it can be transmitted by aphids and by weed. Uh, during uh, pollination, the bees can also transmit the disease. When you control aphids in the pest section, you control the woodiness disease. You remove the affected fruits and vines and throw them away or bury them or you can just burn them for you to ensure that you have controlled the disease uh, properly. So you control the diseases by spraying re regain from real IPM after every seven days since planting day. So after every seven days, you spray the fungicides. Every seven days, you spray the fungicides. If it is raining, you add the application rate. If you are doing 20 mLs, you add 10 or you double depending on the amount of rains. So if it is cold, you do it after 7 days and if it is dry, you do it after 10 days. Harvesting in some region, especially the warmer areas, you can do it throughout the year but in others, it is usually uh, twice a year. When you are harvesting, Throughout the year, production fluctuates and rises interchangeably. So there will be months that you're having high yields and there are months that you're having low yields. For you to have supply all year round, you have to plant in blocks. So if you have a, a, an acre piece of land, instead of planting the entire acre in uh, the same during the same period, you can spacing of three months. So this month, this, the first three months, you plant in a quarter. The other three months, you plant in the quarter, the other quarter like that, so that by the end of the year, you will be having supply consistently once you start harvesting. So if this crop diminishes, the other one, the other block is already. Uh, it's ready for harvesting. That way, you will be keeping your customers happy by consistent supply. So you can harvest your fruits before they turn fully into uh, the purple color because by the time they reach the market, especially if your market is uh, quite uh, a distance or you, you are exporting, they will, be, they will have turned the right color for the market and they will be good enough for eating still when you're harvesting do not pluck off the fruits from the vines because you're going to injure uh, the vine this is what most of us uh, usually do but you can actually do a simple uh, strategy by letting the flower the fruits to drop off uh, because you're having a large uh, area of uh, harvesting they're going to be dropping off in large amounts and when you let the fruits to drop off instead of plucking you're going to prevent the diseases from spreading from one fruit to another you're going to prevent injuring the vine and you're going to be getting mature fruits for the market that are going to be sweet and they're going to be uh you know they're going to make your customers uh happy so the lifespan for your vines for your passion fruit vines can be two and a half years for the high yielding crops and for the low yielding crops they can go up to four years 
you know they are giving you a uh, few fruits but they are going to last for a longer period of time the high yielding crops are a maximum of three years but depending on how you're going to take care of the vines they can go up to five years so the cost of production goes from uh, 500 to 600,000. That is for an acre piece of land. And you're going to start harvesting your fruits from the 6th to the 8th month to get good yields for a number of years, at least 5 years. If you take good care of your crops, you pluck off the flowers in the first uh, 4 months so that you can give that plant the strength uh, to grow and, you know, it can be having a good strength for it to give you quality fruits for a longer period of time instead of harvesting early and then you harvest for a short period of time if you take good care of your passion fruit vines you're going to be harvesting from 400 kgs to 800 kgs in a naked piece of land and you're going to be selling them from 100 shillings to 150 shillings depending on the market that you're going to target so you can have a higher price you can have a lower price that is usually dependent on whatever market that you're going to choose during the first months of the passion fruit vines development you know that period when you have not started uh, harvesting or you have not started fruiting you can intercrop your crops with water melons pumpkins and tomatoes these are good they're going to share the nutrients you know when the passion fruits are using this the tomatoes watermelons and uh, pumpkins are using the other so they are going to be having a symbiotic relationship they don't share the same diseases they don't share the same pests so they are going to be a good intercropping system for your crops and if you're going to be using the netting uh you know the galvanized wire it is also ideal because it is not going to affect the you know it is going to to leave some area empty and it is going to give you room for you to intercrop the passion fruits with other crops well, thank you guys for watching thank you for listening to me thank you and i hope that you're going to apply all of these tips if you didn't watch the previous video before this one make sure you watch so that you can know what you can do to your preparation of the land the selection of the poles the placing of the nets the everything that you need to know the seedlings the varieties make sure that you uh, check on this uh, link above here and uh, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, commenting. Make sure that you share with your friend, with your other fashion fruit farmers, with other farmers who are interested in growing their agribusinesses so that we can grow our agribusinesses together. And until next time, bye-bye.